Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Soccer Queens podcast. Today is a very special episode. I have Haley Kottmeyer on with me. She is actually one of our first players on the the podcast now and she is doing amazing work right now and we're going to go into everything she's up to with with the soccer show that just recently started so Haley if you just want to give just a background on you and your your playing career and what led you up to this point to starting the soccer show um definitely thank you for having me I you know out of college I there was no professional women's league until kind of the 18, the, you know, the, the absolute last hour. And they announced that the NWSL would be created um, pretty much right as I was graduating in December. So I took a stab and was the second to last draft pick and kind of, you know, packed up and moved to Seattle and, and got a roster spot there and ended up playing for about seven and a half, eight years. So my playing career, um, kind of, you know, like up and down and some really, really good big highs and a few lows, but kind of overall, I, I wouldn't change a thing. I, I loved it. I loved being able to play not only in the NWSL, but all over the world. And then next kind of, you know, became that time. And I was like, all right, what, what am I going to do next here? Um, and I had always coached while I was playing. So kind of that was an easy transition, but I, I kind of felt like I wanted to do more. And I, it actually reconnected with um, one of my old teammates, Haley Rosen, who had started this company called Just Women Sports. And, you know, it, it was very, very, you know, small at the time. And I think that's cool. I, you know, I definitely encourage anybody who hasn't to check it out. It's the goal is to just be like a news media outlet for women's sports that treats women's sports like sports and treats them the way that they should be treated. And I reconnected with Haley and, and started doing some work with them. And, you know, there became some opportunities to host and I got connected to, to Dave that way. And we just did kind of this one-off chat about the NWSL. And, you know, then it has spiraled to kind of where it is now where we got streaming rights from Auto Football for the Women's Super League over in the UK. And we're like, let's do something with these rights. So we, we made a YouTube show. It's on the Just Women Sports YouTube channel. And we've really enjoyed it. I mean, it's it's allowed me to dive headfirst into a league that, you know, you kind of follow the Chelsea's and the Arsenal's because they're big names, but you don't necessarily always follow the whole league. So it allowed me to kind of top to bottom really have to understand and know and, and you know, know my stuff. So I've I've loved it. I've loved, you know, kind of analyzing the game from the playing perspective, the coaching perspective, and now this kind of analyst host perspective. So it's been very cool. That's that's so awesome. And I, I want to say that that you and Dave are just such a fire duo. <laughs> like <laughs> you guys just feed off each other so well. And did so was it like was it his idea or did you both just kind of wake up and you're like, this will be great? Or how did it really it, come about? Yeah. So we started it as, you know, obviously Dave is sort of this renowned trainer to the stars, right? So he's this he's sort of known for basically what he brings and, you know, these elite players like your Alex Morgans and your Mallory Pews and your Sofia Huertas and all these huge names that, you know, put their faith in him. And he's a character, you know, you know, you kind of just hear about him, but he's actually in, in his own right. He's really a character and he really knows his stuff. And did you train with him too, or I didn't. Okay. So I've, I've, we've like barely actually, we, we didn't really even know each other. Like we've crossed paths, but we didn't really know each other. And then it became something where we I think just when sports and independent of me did an interview with him and they're like, this guy's great. Like you guys should do like this, a chat, like you guys should go on Instagram and do a chat about the NWSL. So we went on Instagram and we did a chat about the NWSL and he and I just kind of like hit it off. You know what I mean? Like we, it was like, we'd been friends our whole lives and just like the banter was there and yeah. We gave each other a hard time but you know what I mean like in kind of good fun ways and it's just sort of over the past eight months become this thing where you know now we're like we text all day every day we're just totally inseparable like we're, we're, we're truly like best buds so um it's been it's been great and it it really has just kind of become this slow moving process and you know the rights kind of fell into our lap but all of that was just it happened kind of very oddly organically but made a lot of sense yeah, it really does. And just watching you guys, I think that's what I love most about the show is the banters there. 
So you guys are obviously intelligent and can really speak to the game in such an articulate way, but then you have that other side and it's like, wow, this is really funny to watch. And then you're bantering with the guests as well. And you've had some really cool guests on there. Actually, you know, uh, soccer girl probs, those are my girls. And um, you had Ra Rachel Daly. Are there any other people that you're going to have on in the future that you want to kind of share yeah, with everyone? Actually we just, I mean, yesterday are, and I know that by the time this comes out, but we just had an episode with um, Laura Bassett come out and Laura is used to play for the English national team, you know, just tons and tons of caps has played kind of all over the world and is an absolute legend. So our episode with her just came out and she's an analyst now and she was so good, you know, and, and not that like our other guests weren't good and they all kind of bring something different as far as their experiences go. But um, as far as having somebody who, can really speak about the game. Um, she was great. And I won't give it away, but we I know, I think coming up soon, we got a really awesome Man City player. So we're pumped, oh, yes. pumped about it. I'm like, my head spin. I'm like, I think I know who it is. But yeah. <laughs> we'll when does it come out next? Is it next Wednesday? That one will be next Wednesday. Okay, so got it. All right, guys. Well, be on the lookout, okay? Um, I do want to talk about just being a, a woman in sports and, and as an analyst. How important do you think is it for, for women to get in these positions to grow the the women's game and also to inspire young girls because a lot of young girls listen to this show and, and they want to get involved in sports whether it's play pro like you did be an analyst be a coach um, so how important is it to have women in these positions I think it's so important you know it, it really is truly something where if you see it you can you can see it and you can envision it then you think you can be it and you believe you can be it which is true you know I, I remember like, you know, my age, like who doesn't remember like the 99ers and being okay. like, yeah, like, I'm like, I want to be Brianna Scurry and I must become her and Mia Hamm is everything, right? You know, I think I was, I was Mia Hamm for Halloween for three years in a row. Yeah, we all were. <laughs> we all were, like who yeah. wasn't, right? So it, yeah. it really is something where if you see it, you can believe it. And I think that's it too. It's, you know, not only being able to, you know, have these roles and do them but also be able to see them seeing women's sports on tv seeing us in analyst position you know what i mean like being able to go online and have it right there in front of your face and not be something that you have to search for or that's hidden behind you know men's sports and things like that so for me i think it, it is so important because it, it really is it's such a visual thing of okay someone else has done it there's a blueprint for success and it makes it you know not everybody's going to be a trailblazer and that's okay. But if more and more people do it, I mean, I, I think that's the end goal. Yeah. Yeah. That's so powerful. And it seems like it's just getting better and better, uh, especially with, with women in coaching or as analysts. Um, whereas like several years ago, a lot of women were just scared or didn't feel uh, confident enough um, or like competent enough to do this. But it's like you said, when you, when you see it, when you see someone talking about the game and they're amazing at what they do, it's like, yeah, we're all capable of doing this. And, and that's the one thing when I talk to like my uh, young female athletes, it's the confidence issue. Um, so having that inspiration is so critical. Absolutely. I think, I mean, confidence is such a big one. And I think, you know, you get these visuals of people, you see them do it. And because they've done it, it gives you confidence. And then, and then in the own right, you build your confidence as you do it, you know, and, and not everybody's journey is going to look the exact same to get somewhere, but that doesn't mean that, you know, it can't be done. You don't need to be a player in order to be a coach. I mean, you know, as crazy as that sounds, you don't need to be a player in order to be an analyst. Like if you have these dreams, you, there's all these things you can do to get into these roles and these positions or, you know, working behind the scenes of sport. It, there's so many ways to get there. And I think that's, I think that's what's so amazing now is you see all these faces pop up and they all have their own stories. Now I'm interested to hear how have you gained confidence in, in your career now? Or was it something that you just had to sharpen the ax with and get uncomfortable and, and fail a lot? Like, how did you yeah. get to this point? You know, I think I, when I ended my playing career, actually, and, you know, this is kind of the, it, it's all, you know, the glitz and glam, but the ups and downs of it is, you know, I was on a team, a losing team for two years, and that's really difficult. So I actually ended my career kind of in a place where 
I didn't feel like I was on top of the world. You know, I, I, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't feeling like super amazing about how I had played that year. And yet there I was retiring. And I had so many like questions to myself even of like, should I do this now? Should I do it after I feel like I feel better about the game? Like I have a better relationship with it. You know, just like I kind of had a bad year and, you know, I kind of just made the choice that it was time. And so I kind of just, you know, jumped into the unknown a little bit. And actually through the league, I had, before I had decided that I was ready to be done playing, I had gotten, they did an internship with Budweiser, who's one of their sponsors. Um, and I went there and I took advantage of, you know, this opportunity that they provided. And even though that like didn't end up being my job or anything, I, I was kind of in this working world a little bit. And I was training in the mornings in case I was going to go back and play. And then doing this working world thing. And there was honestly this like tiny little part of me, especially as stuff with like teams weren't working out um, and the outbreak of COVID, you know, quite frankly, that I was like, okay, I, I can do this. You know, like it was kind of like this opportunity that fell into my lap and um, you know, you meet, you know, it's really not this, you know, but connections are everything. And Haley had reached out and knowing Haley and it just, it did all kind of transpire, but I had a lot to learn. I mean, I didn't know anything. And, kind of feeling like I was starting over at age 30 is interesting. And then I was like, oh my gosh, I've been playing my whole life. And now I'm in the working world where I'm basically like someone who's quote unquote, like entry level, but yet I'm 30 years old and I have all these experiences. And it was just for me, I think over this past month, couple months, year ish of figuring out how to use my experiences that even though I'm new to something, and even though I'm learning that I've, I've done a lot of really cool things and I can bring them into what I'm doing now. Um, and I think it is, it's learning and you're going to fail and you're going to do things wrong and it's not always going to be pretty, but you know, I think at the end of the day, it's, you have these little wins and it's the little wins that just kind of keep you going. Mm -hmm. That's so powerful. And it's, it's always interesting when you, when you look back on your career, you look at all the failures you had and then all the skills that you've sharpened, whether it's a mental or your, your technical or your physical skills. It's like, you can, you can learn anything at any point, as long as you put, put your mind to it. And even though you were start starting over and jumping into a new career, it's like, no, you, you did this your whole life and playing. So you can do it in any avenue that, that you pursue. And it's amazing to take that power back and feel like you're in control. Absolutely. And I mean, I think that's true of any age, right? Like it doesn't have to be a playing career. It could be anything. It could be passing a class. It could be, you know, there's, there's all these things that if you really look at yourself and what you've done that you've already accomplished and you've created these, you know, blueprints for yourself of, okay, if I set my mind to something, I can do it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, I, I do want to shift gears a little bit. And I know you had mentioned uh, COVID and not being able to work out. And I had this flashback to Ivy Casagrande, uh, your, your former strength and condition coach, wow. for Instagram stories. And you guys were doing some Zoom, uh, like 80s workout. Was that? <laughs> well, I had actually just, when they were doing that, I had just, I had retired just before the start okay. of that season. Got it. But, but you yes, had was, her as a coach. I was all, you know, and so I had had Evie the year before. Yeah. And Evie is fantastic. Like, if you were talking about somebody who is, like, so passionate about what she does and wants to learn and wants to be the best version of herself for, for other people, you know what I mean? Like, everything she's doing is to make other people better. It's, it's Evie. And she... I loved working with her at Orlando. I, you know, even as, like, someone later in my career, I learned so much from her. But yeah, and I, you know what, I give her a lot of credit and I'm sure some of it's the girls and some of it's her of this, okay, we're in this kind of cruddy situation and we're all stuck inside and we're getting to the point where everybody's probably really tired of staring at screens. And there she is like having everybody in, you know, <laughs> like nylon spandex yeah. doing call on me videos. Yeah. Yeah, and like uh, she did like a, a yoga one, and just Hilarious. she's just super creative. And yeah, I'm I'm glad that that you had had the opportunity to work with her too. And um, we we had connected because I, I'm more in the youth strength and conditioning world. And uh, several years ago, she was also in the youth world, and then she of course moved to to the Maybe. pros and got the the job at the Pride. And she, 
she is someone who is a, a master of her craft. And, and I do want to touch on some of the, the workouts she, she had you doing, especially as a goalkeeper, because I, I've trained a lot of youth goalkeepers and they're like, oh, well, we don't, we don't need to lift weights. And it's like, well, you guys got to be like the most beastly yeah. on the field, you know? So do you want to just speak to some of your physical training and how it helped you? Absolutely. And I think, you know, and Evie recognized this, and I think a lot of coaches at kind of this higher level recognize it is goalkeeping is not the same, right? It's just, it's just not. I'm, it, it can't, yeah, there are outliers, don't get me wrong, but like typically speaking, I'm probably not the fastest on the team. I'm definitely one of the strongest on the team. You know, like jump, I can jump further than a lot of people on the team, but I can't, you know, if you're like run the beep test, like I'm not, I'm not your number one. And, that, right. and that's okay, right? We kind of have these like different attributes and I think for goalkeepers, even though it looks different, there's still a place for all of these things, right? I might need not need to do, you know, yeah, once a year I have to run the beep test because my whole team is doing it and I'm doing it and it's good for team morale. And even though I'm not training the beep test, I'm going to be as fit as I possibly can be in what I'm doing and show up and kind of give it my all. But, you know, and, it, and I think it kind of varies like in and out of season, but I mean, we're, we are so prone to potentially being inju injured, right? So lifting and actually even, you know, doing out a program where at times you are lifting heavy and building strength and constantly making yourself better is really, really vital. You know, I might not have to run as much, but having my fast twitch muscles. So, you know, band work and using med balls and having, you know, being able to throw kind of higher, heavier weight quickly in these sharp, quick movements that's not just, you know, for my ability, that's to keep me from not getting injured. But I do go and I throw my body to try to get something out of the top corner and I have to land. Um, so there are all these, you know, there's so many things and I think our programs are different. If you hear little noises right now, I have a puppy. And he, hey, he's very cute. But so he adorable. Is, he is trying to bite my hand right now and he's, he's well this will go on youtube so unedited okay, yeah this is yeah. him this is, this is ricky everyone say hi oh my gosh so adorable. Hi ricky. Ricky <laughs> always finds his way on screen so ricky's a bit of a star um oh i love it <laughs> sorry yeah but i think everybody's different you know and, and your programming is going to reflect that and definitely whoever you know you're working with or the resources you have access to you know figure out what that looks like because being strong, but also being agile and being quick. At the end of the day, those for a goalkeeper, those are going to help you the most. And being able to jump, your plyometrics have to be insane. So even though it looks different, it is still important. It doesn't mean you don't have to do anything just because you're a goalie or you don't have to run at all just because you're a goalie. You know, like we got to do some running. It might be shorter sprints, but you got to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so, I'm so glad you touched on just the, the specifics of like the power development and the agility and being able to move in all planes and, and jump. And when, when you look at goalkeeping, it's like, yeah, that, you know, it looks like they're not doing a whole lot, but when they are, it is like max output. <laughs> um, and that's when you need to perform. And then also re being able to reduce injury because you guys are going in for, for hard tackles and dives and a lot, a lot of contact in those moments. So um, had you been doing strength and conditioning your whole life or uh, was the, yeah. the pros kind of like the first introduction or? Yeah. So I played I would say very hit or miss kind of any time before college, you know, like just, I wasn't structured in it. Like I remember, you know, like you're like fuzzy because now it's been ages, but I know that there was like a brief period of time where I was going to a gym that was near my house and I was working with a strength coach a little bit, but I don't think I did that for super long. I and mean, I think part of that was a little bit just like the injury prevention PT stuff because I was playing a lot of sports. And then when I got to college, that's kind of when I was introduced to the world of like real fitness and weight training. And there, everybody had the same program. So, I, I mean, I loved my experience at Michigan. It was great. But like a lot of the running, I did all the running. A lot of the, you know, here's your strength program. We all had really similar, this pretty much the same strength programs so when I was there. I'm sure it's changed since, you know, the, the world of strength and conditioning has adapted and evolved so much. And that's now, you know, 12, 12 and plus years ago. So, yes. <laughs> um, but you know, it was like kind of had the program. So I, I think I was introduced and I was 
taught how to do a lot of things like when I was 18. And I definitely wish I would have learned some of the technic the techniques before because it doesn't come naturally to me now. You know, I wish I would have, you know, not necessarily heavyweight, but I don't think I learned a lot of how to do a lot of those things just in the gym correctly. And, and then I was like later in life kind of like fighting to learn it. And even now I have to like really focus on technique if I'm lifting weights because I am, I, you know what I mean? It just, it doesn't come naturally to me, I guess. So there, and I learned to love it there, I would say though. Um, I really loved it. And then, you know, the teams that I was on that really like made it a priority. And, you know, I think as the league has grown, they've had more access to gyms and stuff like that. I kind of really took advantage of those kind of opportunities when they came about there. So, you know, whether it was somebody like Evie or, you know, I had a strength coach in Australia named Nigel, who was fantastic. And, you know, just, just really getting into the gym and learning to love it. I think that was kind of my evolution of, even though I was late to the game, I, I still really enjoy it and, and do it now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's that's important, and and that's something we we preach on here is it's it's good to start young to develop those motor skills as far as the technique, but also to get into those good life habits of just staying healthy and loving to be strong and just being the best version of yourself physically too, and just feeling good. So that's that's been key here, especially with like these young girls. The first thing they'll say is, yeah, like we felt more confident after lifting weights, or we just felt better about ourselves when we walked onto the field and like really good and confident in our abilities. So I'm, I'm really glad that, that you touched on that. Um, as far as girls who want to get into coaching or being analysts or having positions in, in women's sports, what is uh, one piece of advice you would just close out with uh, for, for girls who might be a little bit scared or nervous to just kind of lean in? What, what would you say to them? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, God, there's so many, I think, good ones or, you know, things to say, but one of the biggest ones is I think there are so many women now in this space who kind of have, again, they have, they've taken that trailblazer role. They're the first women and, you know, I don't know, VPs of MLB teams and they're head coaches and they're college coaches or they're strength and conditioning staff members at major, major schools. And, you know, they're kind of like, all these doors and all these glass ceilings are being broken. And so many of them are there and willing and wanting to help. Yeah. You know, and, and, and are willing to speak and are, you know, if you reach out, like and you, I mean, even, even me, I look at it. Like if I know, you know, if I get a note or a message or my email is on my Instagram, like if, you know, and a lot of people are like this and where if you reach out, they are more than willing to help you. And I, I would say that, you know, like you use who you know and, and make connections and ask questions and go out and kind of find these women because they are so, they want, the, you know what I mean? Like, I don't really think, I mean, maybe there's some, but very few are just like climbing their way to the top and like shoving all the other women out, right? Like they really want to be helpful. So any, any chance you get to, you know, talk to somebody or ask a question, do it. Because I think that, you know, getting confidence from somebody else of them being like, yeah, I did it. You can do it. I think that that's huge. Yeah, that's so great. That's so great to just have that, that network of strong women or to just reach out to someone whose life you want to live or follow and their career path and how they carry themselves. Now you mentioned that your emails in your Instagram profile, where can everyone find you to follow up with you, but also to watch the soccer show? Yeah, I am on, um, so my Instagram and Twitter, all my handles are hkotmeyer, at hkotmeyer, K-O-P-M-E-Y-E-R. And then the soccer show is on Just Women Sports. So it's on their YouTube page, but you can also on Instagram, Twitter, I think Twitter's just W Sports, but Instagram, it is Just Women Sports, you know, kind of all written out. I'm wearing the hoodie, the yeah. iconic purple Love hoodie. the purple, that's, that's mine too. <laughs> Love, the purple. Love it. Uh, and yeah, you can find everything on there, right? So it's, it's there, they're hosting it on their platform and it's on all their channels and you'll see that you'll see our faces pop up on the Instagram feed and, and all that. So they've got some really cool resources there. Awesome. And yeah, guys, just women's sports. I've been following them for a while now and just um, amazing content. If you, if you are a young female athlete, absolutely check them out. I'm going to include all this in the show notes and in the YouTube caption. So you guys can follow up and watch the show and just 
be exposed to women crushing it. And again, like Haley said, reach out and, and get your, your foot in there. Haley, thank you so much. This has been su such a great conversation and I'm sure we'll, we'll stay connected soon, but thanks for all of your advice and, and your insights. Absolutely. And, and